Hallelujah. <laughs> Come on, family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The devil is a liar. Hallelujah. Share like and invite. Share like and invite. Try your few. God bless you. It says again, the devil is a lie. He tried to mess that one up, but it was not happen. Stephanie Blood, God bless you. Mr. Aldrich, God, Miss Aldrich, God bless you. Miss Williams, Sherry, God bless you. Angela, God bless you. Dante, God bless you. Nicole, God bless you. Kay, God bless you. Lachey, God bless you. Takeway Johnson, God bless you. Miss Hudson, God bless you. The battle. Hallelujah. T. Hart, God bless you. Shannon Belton, God bless you. Share like and invite. Hallelujah. The image that tried to steal the lie, y'all. The devil is a lie. Hallelujah. No weapon. No weapon. Formed against us will prosper. Share like and invite. Melissa Moss, God bless you. Hallelujah. Demetrius Thomas. Tiara Scott, God bless you, hallelujah. Share like an invite, hallelujah. Regina Heath, God bless you. Kim, God bless you, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Miss Coleman, God bless you, hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody, let me, uh, Pauline Jones, God bless you, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Shonda Nicole, Miss Thomas, God bless you. Hallelujah. Share like an invite. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb of God. The enemy tried to play with that lie, but the devil is a lie. Hallelujah. He's a liar and the truth ain't in him. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Share like an invite, family. Hallelujah. Let's get somebody on tonight. Hallelujah. God can do anything but fail. We serve a ma magnificent God. We serve an all-knowing God. Hallelujah. God can do anything but fail. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Share like an invite, family. Let's prepare ourselves for a mighty move of God. Without God, we can do nothing. But through God, we can do all things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> the devil tried to fight their life, family. Holy John, Shana Nicole, Miss Sims, Miss Smith, God bless you. Miss Murray, God bless you. Miss Taylor, God bless you. Miss Brown, God bless you. The Portia Tanksley, God bless you. Hallelujah. The Quayla, God bless you. Pasha Hunt, God bless you. Sarita Hall, God bless you. Wanda Ramsey, God bless you. Miss Simpkins, God bless you. Katrina Whaley, God bless you. Tamara Hatcher, God bless you. Sean Lou, God bless you. Clifton Morris, God bless you. Dorsey, God bless you. Hallelujah. All right, Shanti, I'm going to go ahead and see you. Uh, Nakia Johnson, God bless you. Hallelujah. Her name is Nikki. Neek Moss, hallelujah. I'm going to go in and see right quick. Do I see her friend request? Hallelujah. That's the name she under? Neek, Neek Moss. Hallelujah. Glory be. Tell her I don't see it. Neek, Neek Moss, tell her I don't see it. Hallelujah. Miss Starward, God bless you. Hallelujah. Tell her I don't see it. Tell her send me one. Mika Story, God bless you. Hallelujah. Miguel Hines, God bless you. Jermaine Turner, God bless you. Benita Hill, God bless you. Miss Hudson, God bless you. Hallelujah. Miss Martin, God bless you. And I'll never be Martin. God bless you. Share like an invite, family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The lady named Neek, Neek Moss. She got to send a friend request. Shantae Neat Neat Moss said, can you accept her friend request so she can come in? Tell her to send me a friend request. I just checked. Unless she up under another name. It's not in there. Hallelujah. 
Miss Riley, God bless you. T, God bless you. Miss Chapman, God bless you. Hallelujah. Share like an invite, family. Hallelujah. We're getting ready to go forth tonight. Stephanie Belton, God bless you, Stephanie. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell her, come on in now. Hallelujah. Tell her, go out and come back in. Neat, neat moths. Go out and come back in. Hallelujah. Glory be to Miss Hill. God bless you. Hallelujah. Miss Reed, God bless you. Tell her, go out and come back in. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb. Let's get ready to get started, family. Hallelujah. Welcome to Shine Box of Chocolate Live. Expect the unexpected. Hallelujah. Mr. West, Mr. Mr. Ely Williams, God bless you. Pamela Moss, God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Let us know where you're tuning in from tonight. Let us know where you're tuning in from tonight, family. Shatar, God bless you. Hallelujah. Okay, we got you. Hallelujah. Neat, neat mouse, God bless you. Hallelujah. Tawana Johnson, God bless you. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb of God. God bless you, family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Hallelujah. It's Williams. God bless you. Benita here. God bless you. Hallelujah. Betty Daniels. God bless you, Betty. Hallelujah. Share like and invite. Let us know where you're tuning in from, family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, family. We're getting ready to go for tonight. Hallelujah. Let God have his divine way. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yeah, Thompson Augusta. God bless you, Diamond. Orlando, we got two Orlando. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Tip, Regina Heath. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb. Aiken. Okay. Man, Bill Riley, Eastern Shore, Chesapeake Bay, Rig, Mama John. <laughs> Mama John, peace and blessings. Up there in the Northeast, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Glory be to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praying for you, Mother Jones. Mother Jones been around a long time, family. We're connected a long time. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb of God. We're going to be coming out of Luke. Sister King, D. Wright, what's going on with your nephew? Hallelujah. Demarcus Wright, God bless you. Hallelujah. Since the king put up the scripture, Luke 16, verse 19 through 31. Luke 16, 19 through 31. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Miss Red, God bless you. <laughs> ah, I hear you, Mama John. Glory, we thank God for you. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb. Ah, oh, man. <laughs> DW, they got you out there on that 34. <laughs> I know I did, nephew, but hey, somebody got to do it right now. You know what I mean? Kid got to eat, that's right. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Mother Joan. Luke 16, verse 19 through 31. Uh, Whitney, bless you. Amika Rogers, God bless you. Sheila Grant, God bless you. Hallelujah. Share like an invite, family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sit in the fire, family. Hallelujah. The Mario Lowe, God bless you. We getting ready to pray. Sit in the fire, family. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Luke 16, 19 through 31. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to your name. Miss Gilmore, God bless you. Come on here, Mr. West. Church was lit, y'all. Hallelujah. I'm telling you. Hallelujah. I don't know where you went, but if you ain't go to church, you might have missed something. Devin Hill, God bless you. Neek Neek Moss. Maria Mass. Hallelujah. Come on and sit in the fire, family. We getting ready. We getting ready to pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. May Grant, Miss Gant, May Grant, try your signal. Check your area out. TT, we see you made it. We see you made it, TT. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. We thank God for every person in attendance today. My God. Hallelujah. God bless you, Shatar. They didn't even see you. God bless you. Lucina. Lucina, God bless you. Yes. Hallelujah. We get ready to pray, family. Father, in the name of Jesus. God, we give this life to you. Father, use it for your glory. Father, let us decrease in the natural. You increase in the spirit within us. Father, have your divine way. Father, use us for your glory. Father, do what only you can do tonight. Father, work a miracle in our life. Father, we know that you can do everything but fail. Father, we decree and declare miracle signs and wonders to take place tonight. Father, feed us fresh manna from heaven. Nothing stale, nothing outdated. But Father, we need a word from you, my God. Father, we need a word, a right now word, Father. Mm. Fire. Hallelujah. Y'all send, send the fire, family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody experiencing something right now. Some um confusion. I just seen it. Hallelujah. Send the fire. We bind that spirit of confusion now in the name of Jesus. It's like it was a fight for them to get on here. We bind that spirit now in the name of Jesus. And we render it powerless over your life. Right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus. You got to push though. Whoever this is, you got to push. You got to push to get this word. Hallelujah. If it's you, say it's me. Hallelujah. I'm going to show y'all. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Do what only you can do tonight, God. Work a miracle. Work a miracle, God. I bind every spirit of confusion, every distraction right now in the name of Jesus. I bind it and I render it powerless. Right now in the name of Jesus. Cover the line under your blood. Put a hedge of fire around it right now in the name of Jesus. Let your will be done tonight like never before. Father, we decree and declare it done in your son Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Listen, I'm listening. Makisha Roberts, God bless you. It's a person on here. It was a fight for you to get on here. It was a fight for you to get on here. 
Hallelujah. I just want to touch and agree with you right quick to bind that, that distraction in your life right now in the name of Jesus. If that's you, say it's me. Let's get it over with. Let's get on into the word. If it's you, say it's me. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Miss Robert Sheena Ramsey, God bless you. If it's you, say it's me. Hallelujah. Link your faith with my faith tonight. Hallelujah. We're going to stop it. Hallelujah. Stephanie Terman. Hallelujah. We got one saying it's me. Hallelujah. God bless you, Luanda. We got one. T saying it's me. Hallelujah. Anybody else? Hallelujah. It was a distraction. It was a fight for you to get on here. Two. Wanda. Hallelujah. Uh, Miss Aldrich. Three. Hallelujah. Four. Hallelujah. Five. Hallelujah. See, I thought it was a game. Six. Hallelujah. Seven. Glory. Eight. Hallelujah. You got to understand what you hear the Father say. Nine. Hallelujah. Ten. Link your faith with my faith. Eleven. Hallelujah. Twelve. Hallelujah. Thirteen. Hallelujah. The enemy didn't, didn't want you. Fourteen. The enemy didn't want you to get this word. If it was a distraction for you to even get on here. Like it, it took everything for you to get here. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. It took everything for you to get on here. 19. Say it's me. Hallelujah. Say it's me. Hallelujah. If that's you, say it's me. 18. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb. 19, 20. See, y'all thought it was a joke, but now you see it ain't no joke. Hallelujah. I know. 21. Come on. Anybody else? Hallelujah. Anybody else? Twenty-two. Hallelujah. Anybody else? Hallelujah. That it was a it was a fight for you to just get on. I'm gonna pray with you right now. We fit to go. We fit to go forward. Hallelujah. All those that said it with me, link your faith with my faith right now. Put your right hand to the screen. Put your right hand to the screen. Father, in the name of Jesus, release your fire upon them now. Every distraction, every spirit of confusion, every weight, everything that's hindering and trying to hold them, we bind it now and we render it powerless over their life. Father, we decree and declare a shift in their life. Let the atmosphere shift right now in the name of Jesus. We render the enemy powerless over their life. Right now in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Come on and say amen, family. Hallelujah. The devil is alive. The devil is alive. Hallelujah. The devil is alive. Say amen, family. Let's go. Hallelujah. My God, Jesus. Hallelujah. Every distraction is being broken as we speak. Every distraction is being broken as we speak. Hallelujah. God can do anything but fail. Do you understand that while I begin to pray, God begin to show me distractions that were happening and causing people not to be able to get on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's go forward, family. Hallelujah. My God, let's go forward. Hallelujah. We can't let the devil hinder or hold us. Let God will be done in your life. Now check this out. Look over. You looked over me. 
but I'm built for it. If you have ever been looked over in the current season of your life, whether it's from a job, whether it's at church, whether it's been by anything concerning your life that you've been looked over, say, I've been looked over. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Say, I've been looked over. God bless you, Teresa. I see you coming in. God bless you. But if you have been looked over, <laughs> if you have been looked over, my God, there's a word for you. If you have been looked over, there's a word for you. If you've been looked over, say, I've been looked over. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. If you've been looked over, there's a word from the Lord. Hallelujah. Miss Barbara D., God bless you. Miss Leslie Whitfield, God bless you. Makisha Yarber, God bless you. If you've been looked over, Quay McCart, God bless you. Say it's me, I've been looked over. Because this word is for you tonight. This word is for you tonight. Glory be to the Lamb of God. They don't even realize what they're looking over. They don't even understand who you are. They're just looking over you. Everybody got qualified but you. Everybody. Nikki, Tanksley, God bless you. LaShonda Reynolds, God bless you. Hallelujah. If you've been looked over, <laughs> Maybe Shauna Nicole said, I've been looking over how, how many times? Hallelujah. Glory. This is a word for you. This is a word for each and every one of you tonight. A divine revelation. God getting ready to feed your fresh manna from heaven. You trying to figure out why people are overlooking you. While I'm in my current situation, people are overlooking me. My God. Now listen, welcome to Shine Boss of Chocolate Live. I understand my ministry ain't for everybody. My ministry ain't for the ones. My life, they ain't even for the ones that don't want to change. The Bible says those that will, let them come. Those that will, let them come. You got to want to change in order to see the change. If you don't want it, you ain't going to see it. My God, Jesus. Mm. Yes, hallelujah We hear you Mama John Listen, we in St. Luke chapter 16 Verse 19 through 31 Hallelujah, God bless each and every one of you But we getting into the word Everybody ready to go to school Hallelujah Everybody ready to go to school Hallelujah St. Luke chapter 16 Verse number 19 through 31. Glory be to the Lamb of God. They looked over me. They act like they didn't even see me. My God. Lord, why? Lord, why? Oh, uh, Big Dog Ely. Let me show you something. Big Dog Ely, listen, the Spirit of the Lord want to use you. But it's some stuff that God wants you to put down so he can use you. So he can use you. So he can use you. Prepare yourself. For the moment that you sit it down, hello, God said he's getting ready to use you. The moment that you sit it down, big dog eat it. The moment you sit it down, God said, I'll use you. We got to be willing to let go of what's in our hands. To receive what's in God's hand. For what's in God's hand is better than what's in our hand. Eyes have not seen or ears have heard. Hello. You ready to go to school? Let's go. We get ready. You ready to go to school? Let's go. Diane Richards. God bless you. Hallelujah. Verse number 19.
<laughs> Big dog, listen, eat it. So, hey, what's your first name? I know you share a husband. I know you're sharing husband, but I want to know your first name. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Big dog Ely. Uh, Mr. West, what is his first name? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you haven't, if you're ready to go to school, say I'm ready to go to school. But I'm trying to deliver the word of the Lord unto Mr. Big Dog Ely, which, you know, I don't want to call him that, Nicholas. Listen here, Nicholas. Hallelujah. God want to use you. And while he want to use you, Nick, God want to use you for his glory. It's some people that you, that you, you hang around, but you can tell that, you know, they only around you at certain times. They're not around you all the time. They're not even around you when you're down. They're only around you when you got something. But God said, the moment that you set down every weight, the moment that you walk away from everything that is not like him, God said, he'll make you a living miracle. Mr. Nick Ely Williams. God said, he'll make you. He'll make a miracle out of you. Because a lot of people, what I see is a lot of people looked over you. Hallelujah. But God said he'll make a lot of people look up to you. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Prepare yourself. Nick, for the moment that you release what's in your hand, the moment that you sit it down, the moment that you walk away, the moment that God said, I raise you up. But you got to take one step and he'll take two. Mr. Nick, how about I know? Well, prepare yourself. Glory be to the Lamb of God. It ain't like you told me in a way. Hallelujah. Fresh manna from heaven. Hallelujah. Listen, verse 19. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fair sumptuous every day. This man dressed well. And they looked upon him because he had on purple. You know, purple represented royalty. Y'all better talk to Nick, tell him, listen up. Purple represented loyalty, royalty. If you want royalty, you got to be loyal. If you want royal, you got to be loyal. You can't get royal without being loyal. But understand, this rich man dressed in the best. Not one day, but every day. They knew that he was a rich man. They knew that he was a rich man. Do you understand? They knew because of the way that he dressed. And a lot of you are walking around looking like the mess that you in. What am I saying? I'm saying a lot of people come and they have it just all over the place. And they look like they've been in a fight. You got to make these men, true men and women of God, use the gift that God gave them. Don't look like what you're going through. Make them look beyond. Man look at the outer appearance, but God look at the heart. Make them look beyond your outer appearance. Now this man, whether he was sick or what, he appeared every day dressed to impress. Now I'm not telling you to have the same mentality that he had, but what I am telling you is that you got to understand that this rich man, he had it all. But just because you have it all, you may be missing the one thing that you need the most. If you don't have Jesus, whatever you got don't amount to nothing. If you don't have Jesus, whatever you have, it does not amount to nothing. Jesus is your everything. You can take what you got and give it away. But if you don't have Jesus on the inside, you're welcome, Mr. Nick. If you don't have Jesus on the inside, you already done lost. A lot of us are portraying the role of a saint when we really are, ain't. Come on, somebody. I understand this lie might not be for you. That's all good. This lie ain't for people who want to remain the same, but people who want to come out of what they in. 
You 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 got to look at what you're doing. You got to look at how you're presenting yourself. How is it that you keep repeating cycles over and over in your life because you keep doing the same thing day in and day out? It has came a routine to come in and listen to the word, but go out and do the same thing. Opposite. You playing contrary to the word. Now watch this. The rich man, he was had his purple linen on. And, and, and he, he, was, he was laid. And when you looked at him, you knew that he had money. You knew that he was rich. And the man was so rich that his name was not even necessary in the scripture. They never even called his name. You can have all the money in the world, but if God don't know your name, it does not matter. If your name is not written in the Lamb Book of Life, now let me tell you something. It's all right to have money. Nothing is wrong with money. But for the love of it is the root of all evil. For you to love money more than you love God. Some of you, you got to have it. Let me show you something. You'll put a job before God. You'll put everything before God. Why? Because I got to get it. Because society has told you that this world operates on money. But the Bible said, be ye separated from the world and the worldly things. Now everybody else can work day and night and night and day, but I refuse to work like a slave. I'm not going to work 80 and 90 hours a week. No. Now the Bible says a man don't work, he don't eat. He worse than an infidel. True. But I'm not going to sit here and slave day and night and night and day. When I got a God that have, has it on the cattle of a thousand hills. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The Bible says that God bless it, make it rich, and it add no sorrow. Some of you work like a dog. And you still ain't got nothing. What am I saying? You got stuff that cannot go with you when you leave here. You got things that are only limited. But if you ain't got Jesus, listen, if this stuff calls you to miss out on Jesus, it's not worth it. If this stuff calls you to miss out on Jesus, it's not worth it. We're going to see tonight. Do you want Jesus? Or do you want the money, the cars, the clothes? Do you want Jesus? Because in order to get Jesus, you got to go down before you can come up. But the devil has said, listen, I'll take you up from here. I'll take you up from here the fast way. Don't it look strange? Have you ever looked around you and the people that are living any kind of way look like they... Phew. They live in any kind of way look like they got it all together. Listen, look like. Don't be fooled by the illusion. Just because it looked like it's together does not mean that it's together. So many times we want the blessing but we don't want the blesser. Give me the house. Give me the car. Give me the clothes. But if you don't want a relationship, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, you'll come in and you'll hear the word of the Lord and you'll leave out and you'll go back unto your mess. And the Bible says in Proverbs 26 and 11, a dog will return to his vomit. A dog will go back to his vomit. What he just regurgitated, he'll go back and eat it up. What is that saying? God said, I'll deliver you out of your mess, but you'll go back to it. Now this rich man, he was dressed to impress. He had everything that you wanted but God. He had everything that you could imagine, but he did not have God. Let's go further. 20. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus who was laid at his gate full of sores. Now understand the story. Understand the text. You got a rich man that got it all. But then you have a beggar named Lazarus laying at his gate. Full of sores. This rich man got so much money he could actually help him out of a situation. 
looked over me. They looked over me. I was looked over. I was looked over because of the way that I looked. They, they didn't think that God was inside of me because the simple fact is I didn't line up to the status quo. I, I did not have the things that the rich man had. And if the Lazarus was not at the gate full of swords and being a beggar, then maybe the rich man would have a conversation with him. But because he's in a different element, they look over you. Because you made up your mind to do right, because you made up your mind to serve God, it looked like everybody looking over you. Yeah, you, you were supposed to be next in line for the church, but they looked over you. You were supposed to be next in line for a blessing. But it was they blessing that they was giving out. They had it already worked out to who they wanted to give it. It was you that was due for the promotion, but somebody else got the job. Am I talking to anybody? It was you that was due for the job. You went for the job, but somebody got it in front of you. It was you that was due for this. It was you. You were old, this, but they looked over you. But just because man look over you does not mean that God does not look to you. The Bible says, I look to the hills which come as my help. All my help come from the Lord. Now they looked over you, but my God, God said they got to look up to you. Look over me, that's fine. I don't fit your needs, but I fit God's needs. It's a different than impressing man than impressing God. Who attention you want? Do you want man's attention? Or you want God's attention? One or two. Man's attention being one or God's attention being two. Which one you want? One or two. Which attention do you want? Because if you want man's attention, it won't last long. But if you want God's attention, you got to go through to get to. And so many of us want to take the easy road out. So many of us want it like a bed of roses. We figure that it would be easier for us to go this way. Who attention do you desire? You want man's attention or you want God's attention? Whose attention do you want? Man being one and God being two. One thing about man, man will leave you. Man will leave you by the wayside. They'll leave you on the side of the road. When you won't do what man wants you to do, they'll walk away from you. But by God, God's grace and mercy been there for you. My God, let's go further. The Bible said that the rich man was dressed to impress. He was so rich he couldn't even help nobody. How could you be so rich you can't help nobody? That's why it does not matter what it looked like on this side of life. Don't be fooled by the very illusion that make you think that you want something that you don't want. The rich man had it all together. But Lazarus was sitting there laying at his gate begging day and night and night and day and he was full of sores. Verse 21. We in St. Luke chapter 16 verse number 21. And desire to be fed with the crown which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover the dogs came and licked his sores. Listen. All Lazarus wanted was to be fed the crumb that fell off of the rich man's table. What is he saying? Let him get some of the leftovers. Let me get some of the stuff that you're going to throw out the door. But my God, he was so much 
into himself, not into God, that he desired not to even give the man what he wanted. The man was in so bad of a shape that the dogs came over and licked his sores. The man could not do anything for himself. Don't that sound like a bunch of us today? We would rather roll with everybody who look like they got it. This is the road we want to take because it appears to go that way. If you watch TV long enough, it'll look like all the homosexuals got everything. Because the, the enemy trying to desire you to go that way. So it makes you think that if you want to be rich, you got to go this way. If you want to have something, you got to go this way. The devil is a lie. You're going to have something, but it ain't going to be money. Praise God. That's right. You're going to get something you can't shake off. The devil is sneak, crafty, little fella. And he puts stuff together to make you fall for it. Let's go further. The man was designed to eat the crumb that fell off the master table. But the master, he was so, the rich man. He was so high and mighty, he could not give him just the crumb that fell off the table. That's why everything you get, it comes from God, not man. The Bible says he commanded the ravens to feed you. But a lot of us do not want God. We just want the thing that God gives. You may tell you how you want God because ain't nothing going to keep you out the house of God. People, people was on Facebook. They was putting a message up. Is it required to go to church? The Bible say, fail not to assemble yourself together. It also say, how can you hear without a preacher? How can he preach except he be sent? But then when you bring it to them, they want to argue and bicker you about staying at home. If you want to stay at home, that's fine. Your life. But let me tell you something. If you stay there and you die in that judgment, he said you didn't do enough. Had you went to church, you'd have been all right. But because you did not do enough, you didn't make it. It's more to God than just sitting in your house. You got to have somebody covering over you. You got to have somebody protecting you. You got to have somebody speaking into you. And I know you can get it off of this live, but you need somebody to lay hands on you. You need to belong to somewhere. Now, if you, I'm not going to argue with people who say you don't have to go to church. That's them. Because when you get that judgment and they say, depart from me. Because the Bible say that the say going to badly make it in. That's the saved. So imagine the ones that are unsaved. You will die out there outside of the will of God. The devil don't mind you being outside the church because you can't hear. The devil don't mind this. And we so caught up in living our life that we forget about the one that's given us life. Hello. We so caught up in living our life that we forget about the one that's given us life. If that's you. And you know that you have forgot about God. That you have forgot about God. That you just live in life. is more to your life than just living. It's more to your life than just living. God created us to worship him. Let me break this down and we're going to go forward. Now, in, the, in the beginning, in Adam and Eve, God created us just to worship him. That was our main purpose, was just to worship before sin came on the scene. The only thing that God can't do for himself is worship himself. When you worship yourself, it's considered pride. The Bible says he resists the pride, but he gives grace to the humble. God can't worship himself. He created us to worship, for, to worship him. 
And let me show you something. He said, if you won't do it, I'll get a rock to do it. But I will not worship myself because that's a spirit of pride. That's what Lucifer got when he was an a ministering angel, the minister of music in heaven. He got a spirit on him that he wanted to be God. He got prideful at what he was doing. He, oh, it's me. And he forgot about God. And the moment you take God out of the equation, the moment you take God out of the equation, the moment you lose. Let me show you something. God can't worship himself. If he worship himself, that's pride. So God said, let me create you in my image and my likeness. I can't worship me, but you can worship me. And God said, if you worship me, my God. He said, if you worship me, he said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men. If you begin to worship God, this is what we were created for, to worship God. The Bible says they that worship God must worship God in spirit and in truth. You were created to worship God. I'm talking about we got to worship God. We ain't even worshiping God the way we should be worshiping God. And then I have people all the time talking about uh, when I get to heaven, you know, they don't even want to stay in church two or three hours. Then they say, listen, you know what I'm saying? It don't take all that. But I beg the difference. A lot of people say it don't take all that. I'm going to show you something. Now, Jesus can't worship himself. God can't worship himself. That's a spirit of pride. And that's what cast Lucifer out of heaven and cast him down. The spirit of pride. His name would change from Lucifer to Satan, the serpent, the adversary. His name would change to the dragon. He, he was, his name would change to this. God can't worship himself, so God created us to worship him. And if we worship God, and if you ain't got time to worship God Because you too busy staying at the house Because you too busy doing everything But getting in the face of God It's alright to be home But you got to give time to God you, you got to give time to God You got to get somewhere Where God is moving How are you going to teach yourself How to hear from God Have you never heard from God You don't even know that God is speaking That's why a lot of you right here That's why he said take and learn of me because God don't speak in just one way. God speak in dream. God speak in vision. God speak on signs. You understand? God speak verbally. If you're not willing to worship God, God said, I'll get a rock to do it with your name on it. Before I worship myself, I'll get a rock to cry out for me. And they'll begin. And look at a rock. It ain't done nothing his whole life but sit there. Ain't got to wait on somebody to move it. Other than that, it'll sit there. And he said, if you won't cry out, I'll get a rock to cry out for you. But one thing I will not do, I will not worship myself. That's what he created us for. But when you have got so above that you cannot even worship God, we have lost it. We have lost it already. My God, in Jesus' name. We have lost it. We come one way and we lead the same way because we don't want God. We got a form of godliness, but we deny the power. You understand? You talking about you got the Holy Ghost, but you in the club. Where the conviction at? You got the Holy Ghost, but you drinking margarita. Where is the conviction? We got to have some conviction because one thing about it is the devil will make you think that you're going to heaven. Because he'll take you any kind of way. God said, I'll take you hot. The devil said, I'll take you lukewarm. I'll take you cold. It don't matter. I'll take you any way. But God said, I'll take you one way. God said, I'll take you one way. Now watch this. So this rich man, seeing this man at his gate. And he used to ask him, can I get the crown that falls from your table? He, he didn't even want to help him. The man was in so bad of a shape. That dog used to come over there and lick his sores. 22. And it came to pass that the beggar died. Hello. 
and was carried by the angel into Abraham's bosom, and the rich man also died and was buried. Wait a minute. The, the beggar died, and the rich man died. God bless you, Stephanie. They both died. One had money, one didn't. You can put all your riches down here and have nothing in heaven. That's up to you. However you desire to do it, that's up to you. But I want to talk to the ones tonight that say, listen, I've been doing it the wrong way. I can't just talk this thing. I got to live this thing. And so many people, they quit the text, but they ain't quit to live. We smoking and drinking and thanking this God. How are you going to smoke and drink and speak in tongues? That's demonic. That ain't even God. He said he won't dwell in an unclean place. How are we going to put him somewhere that he is not? We got to learn, family, that we got to do it God's way or no way. Now, this rich man had so much that he could not help Lazarus. And it was not like he had to figure out what Lazarus was at. Lazarus was at his gate. But he would not help Lazarus for nothing in his life. Because it was all about him. And if it's all about you, you already wrong. <laughs> Man, Lou, you better come on now. Now, if it's all about you, you're already wrong. I'm going to go ahead and tell you. If it's all about you, you're wrong already. Because Jesus came to serve. Not to be served. How you expecting people to wait on you hand and foot and foot in hand and you ain't willing to wait on nobody? You won't even serve on the earth, your boy. You don't even, the truth be told, you don't even want to go to church. You don't even want to push to see what God is, is saying, what God is doing. But listen, the Bible said that, that the beggar died. It was a beggar named Lazarus. And the beggar died. But not only did he die. The Bible said that the rich man died too. But the beggar did not have anything on earth to leave. Now I'm not telling you not to have anything. I'm telling you the stuff that God gave you to be a good steward over what God gave you. God bless you Warren. To be a good steward over what God gave you. The rich man had all of this stuff left. People were going to fight over. He had to leave it for somebody else because he could not take it with him. No matter how much you gain in this life, if you do not have Jesus, you can't buy a ticket to heaven. You cannot. You might can sow your way out of a bad situation, but you can't buy a ticket to heaven. This is what I mean when I say so. Back in the Old Testament, they were, when they was in a situation... And they needed God. They would take a ram, a lamb, a goat, a bullock, and they would kill it. And they would offer it as a sacrifice. We don't kill that now. Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice. So now you got to sow your way out. And a lot of people want to just sow any kind of way. But you can't sow any kind of way. You got to sow out of your need. My God. You got to sow out of your need. What am I saying? When you sow, you can't sow. Well, saying, listen here, you know, I got a thousand, but I need a million dollar blessing, but I'm going to get fired off. Do we not realize God sees everything? The eyes of God is upon everybody. God is looking at everybody. The Bible says he's coming with the books in his hand. When Jesus comes, he's going to come with the books in his hand. He's going to have the Lamb's Book of Life. He's going to have the books. And I hope your name is in the Lamb's Book of Life. If it's not in that book, my God, you booked. You doomed. This rich man had it all on earth. And some of us, looking at our current situation, trying to compare to our next door neighbors. Why they got this? Why God bless them with that? Why this and why that? Instead of rejoicing with them that rejoice. You don't even understand if God gave it to them or the devil gave it to them. Hello, y'all didn't even know that, did you? The devil will give you some stuff to keep you out there in the world. Because ill sin was, was sour. Ill sin was nasty like it really is. Then my God. 
if he was to do it. That right? That right, Mother John? If sin really tasted like how it looked in the sight of God. The Bible said that sin stinks in the nostril of God. But we so much enjoy it because of the lust of the flesh. Your flesh a mess. If we don't crucify this flesh, if we don't go and stop doing what the flesh want to do, we must be more spiritual than flesh. The flesh will have you cussing somebody out that cut you off. You be riding down the road, you just came from church, somebody cut you off, first thing you want to do, you want to flip them something. You want to give him, give him this finger. Hey, what you cut me off for? That ain't even God. You just left the house of God. The Bible said that the rich man died. Wait a minute. Now, I thought his money could keep him here. I thought if, if you had money, we making America great again. If you had money, you could stay around. But death cannot be bought off. And you can't buy your way to heaven. Death has an expiration date on it concerning you. It's a day that you are expired. It's a day that you will lead this side of life. But if you put all your earnings in riches, if you take everything and work for stuff, just to say I got something. And you didn't even have nothing. When Lazarus left, he didn't have nothing to give him. Now let me show you. Nobody could bury Lazarus, really. Because the Bible said that Lazarus was taken up into the bosom of Abraham. But it said the rich man died and was buried. Did y'all catch that? I need y'all to listen to this again now. And it came to pass that the beggar Lazarus, he died. And was carried by angels into, the, into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. My God. Do you understand? He would just he would he at least Abraham at least Lazarus would carry by angels into the bosom of Abraham. But my God, the rich man was just he just died and he just was buried. And he was buried. And he was and matter of fact, now who got the glory ride? Who got the glory right now because the rich man thought that he had it as long as he was on this side of life. He looked over the people that God was trying to get him to help. Brought a man to his front door. Now yeah, we have to be wise at what we, as who we help. But my God, all he wasn't asking for money. He said, listen, can I just get the crumbs that fall from your table? That's all he was asking for. He was not asking for him to give him a million dollars. He was not asking for his life saving. He said, can I just get a plate? But the rich man didn't want to serve nobody. Because what I got for me, it is for me. The devil is a lie. Let's go to 23. Now understand the rich man... That I, Hey, Lazarus is in Abraham's bosom. He was carried by angels. He done rolled out of this bad boy. I'm talking about clean style. But my God, now you got the rich man. He was died and buried. Hello. And I know a lot of y'all. People done told y'all at these funerals. I'm going to go ahead and cut you and get it over with. People done told you at these funerals. Oh, they going to be with the Lord. They in the My God. We got to read, saints. We got to read. We got to read. We got to read. Because they ain't even been judged. So how they gone to be with God? How you going to say that they made it in? When you know they were living contrary to the word of God. Now yeah, if they got it right at the end, but you don't even know that. How are we going to say what well, somebody made it? We can't even do that. Judge not for you to be judged. But listen. Verse 24. Verse 23. And in hell he lifted his eyes. And in hell he lifted his eyes. Now wait a minute. You're going to live in hell. And you're going to die and go to hell. 
This life, this earth we live in here is a form of hell. You see all this killing. You see all these people being tormented with sickness and everything. This is a form of hell. You're going to live in hell and you're going to die and go to hell. The devil is a lie. Let's go fuck. And he cried and said, why did he say? And in hell he lifted up his eye. Being in torment, see Abraham afar off, and Lazarus is in his bosom. So now he's in his situation. And Lazarus is in his situation. But at one time it was Lazarus was like this. And he was like this. But God said, I'm a wheel in the middle of a wheel. I know how to take that thing and turn it around. And God know how to make the first last and the last first. Now watch this, family. Now, the rich man died and was buried. But when he opened his eye, he was tormented. I need to read that to you again. I need to read that to you again. 23, in hell... He lifted his eyes being in torment. And, in, and seeing Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. 24. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy upon me. And send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am tormented in this flame. Let me do this for you, family. I'm going to sit this right here. Now listen, it's a little top right here. I don't know if you can see it, but it's a top. Now the rich man saying, listen. He looks so far, he's like, listen, father. Listen. Let Abraham, let Lazarus take his dirty finger that he was sleeping outside. He had sores all over his body. Let him take his finger and dip it in water that it may cool my tongue. How much water can you get on the tip of your finger? How much water can you really get on the tip of your finger? He said, listen, Abraham, father, please let Lazarus take his hand. I'm talking about the dirty Lazarus. I'm talking about the beggar Lazarus, the one that was at your gate, the one that stayed out there, the one that had sores all over his body, the one that the dog licked, and the one that asked you, can he get the crown that fall off your table? Because he was hungry. And now you had denied him. And now you want Abraham to let Lazarus take his finger and dip it in there to cool your tongue. Like how long is a tip of water, a tip, a drip of water on the tip of your finger going to cool your tongue? It said, my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But when you was out, you was at the blue flame. Hello. You, when you was out, you were doing everything. You were doing what you wanted to do. You was in the club. You were doing what you wanted to do. But Lazarus was laying at the gate. And you would come in and you would leave out in your nice linen. And all he wanted you to do was give him something to eat. You look over him every day that you pass by. But because he did not fit your status quo, because he did not play the part that you thought he should play, he did not look the way that you thought he should look, you didn't even think twice about what he was asking. Now I know when people say when you got money, a lot of people come, but yeah, but he asking for money. He's asking for a crumb that falls from your table. He's asking for something that you already have. Your leftovers. What you're not even going to eat. What you're going to throw to the dog. He's asking you for that. Now watch this. But Abraham said, son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receiving the good thing. I'm talking to you now. And likewise, Lazarus, the evil things. But now he is confident and thou art tormented. Don't get it twisted. There's nothing wrong with having stuff. God want to bless you. God want to show out in your life. But when these things come before God, then that ain't God. Anything that you put before God, that's your God. 
Now, he, Lazarus said, listen, if you can let, if, if you can let Lazarus to take his finger with the sores on it and dip it in the water, just cool my tongue. And, and Abraham said, no. See, when y'all when was on earth, you caught yourself having a good life, living any kind of way, in the club, in the street, fussing, cussing, doing what you want to do. You call yourself living a good life. You say that I'm grown, I can do what I want to do. Smoking and cussing and fussing and raising sand and living any kind of way. You said I can do what I want to do, I'm grown. But old Lazarus was laying at the gate. And just because you had it, you were not want, you were not willing to give Lazarus anything. And a lot of us are looking over people that God trying to get you to look to. Now the tables have turned. Lazarus was last and the rich man was first. But God said, I'm a wheel in the middle of a wheel. And he spin the thing around. And now he said, listen, now you being tormented. Because you wanted to do things the way you wanted to do things. You didn't want to do what God would have for you to do. So you lived your life any kind of way on this earth. And that's what the rich man did. He went, he parted, he did everything that he wanted to because he had it. He thought that he had everything that he needed for this lifetime. But the fact of the matter is he was missing the very thing that Lazarus had, he was missing it. Yeah, he had the money. Yeah, he had the car. Yeah, he had the house. Yeah, he had the clothes. But he did not have his soul right. And when Lazarus died, not long after Lazarus died, the rich man died. The case in point here is that it does not matter your current situation. If you don't have Jesus, you will die and go to hell. I'm going to let you know straight across the board. I don't care what people tell you that on this life you can live any kind of way. A lot of people love to say, but he grace and his mercy. But they don't want to tell you that his grace and mercy going to sooner or later, he'll take it from you. Well, wait a minute. No, he won't. He said his grace and mercy and do it to the end. Yeah, but he said I'll turn them over unto a reprobated mind. I'll let them do what they want to do. Because after I have tried to pull on them and pull on them and tried to get them to live their life right and come into the church and come up from among them and be ye separated, after I done tried to do that and they keep rejecting me, I'll just go somewhere else. Now watch this. Verse number 26. Besides all this, between us and you, there's a great gulf fix. There's a place that we can't cross over to get to you. So once you get into hell, ain't no coming out trying to get yourself back to God. That's why you got to get yourself right right now. Yeah, people going to invite you out for drinks. That's their job. That's what the devil going to have them to do. If you drinking is all right, why you ain't bringing it to the club? Why you ain't taking it from the club to the church? You'll bring, you'll bring this. You'll bring that to the church. You'll bring this all day long and drink it at the church. Why? That's water. You ain't worried about that. You'll, you'll do that. So... If you say it ain't nothing wrong with drinking, then the next time you go into your sanctuary, take your stuff with you. Because ain't nothing wrong with it. But the fact that it matter because you don't take it because you know it's wrong. You just want to satisfy the flesh. And the flesh is a mess. And your flesh will have you just like the rich man. His name ain't even important. But notice the beggar named Lazarus. They mentioned Lazarus' name because his name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life. But the old rich man, his name was not found in the Lamb's Book of Life, but his name was in the other book that did not even matter. This book did not matter because this is the book that went for everybody in this book, they going to heaven. Here is the thing. When you know that it's wrong and you continually do it, you just a violator. 
You just want to please the flesh. A lot of us say, well, you know, I'm letting God help me to get through it. If you want it, you'll put it down. If you want out of it, you'll put it down. If you want out of that bad relationship, that fornication, that adultery, you'll put it down. You'll sit it down because your life depends on it. And people are not telling you the truth that you could die in that mess. You could die in that mess. That rich man, if he had a clue that he would be in the shape he in now. I do believe that he would have done something different. But because he had no clue. Because I'm riding high. Because I'm skinning and grinning. Because I'm sliding and gliding. Because I ain't got to worry about nothing. But I'm looking over. If you would learn something from Lazarus. You got to learn. That it does not matter at your current situation. It does not matter. You know, ain't no, listen. I'm not telling you that you're going to get rid of this stuff by yourself. But he said if you take one step, he'll take two. I'm saying if you're tired of smoking, you say, Lord, I'm putting it down. In order for me not to pick it up, I'm going to need your help. Your first step was putting it down. Now it's up to God to make the next step. But faith without work is dead. So if you're not willing to drop it, if you're not willing to put it down, you don't want to let it go. If you're not willing to walk out of, you're not willing to let it go. You want to stay in that mess. But he said, there's a great gulf fix so that which, is what, which would pass from hence to there, you can't. Neither can they pass to us that would come here. He said, listen, now, now that the tables have turned, now that, that Lazarus is up here and you down there, now you want Lazarus to take his hand and cool your tongue, but the devil is alive. There's a fix that you can't even come over here and we can't even go over there. The Bible said, let the weed and tag grow together. He'll do the separate. He'll do the separate. Now watch this. 27. Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou would send him to my father's house. He said, listen, if you're not willing to let him just cool my tongue, can you wake Lazarus up from the dead and send him to my father's house? For I have five brothers that he may testify to them, lest they also come into this place of torment. He said, listen, if you can do anything, I'm stuck in this situation. But listen, can you tell, let him go and warn my brothers? Can you let somebody that done went on go back and tell somebody that they don't want to go to hell? Because hell is a real place. Can you let somebody know? Now watch this now. Version number 29. Abraham said unto him, they have Moses and prophets. Let them hear them. Let them hear them. Now watch this. And we're going to finish these verses and we're going to we gonna teach this thing a little bit. Abraham said unto him, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, nay, my God, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. He said, listen, if you allow somebody to come back from the dead and go and tell them, they'll repent. 31. And he said unto him, if they hear not Moses, if they don't even hear the prophets, neither will they be persuaded through one rose from the dead. What is he saying? He's saying that, listen, if you're not going to listen to me tonight, and I'm telling you to drop everything that you in. If you're not going to listen. He said I ain't bringing nobody back from the dead. You got the prophets. You got God's mouthpiece out there in the land. Telling you to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's going to be over a thousand people that are on this line when we get off. I got people in the background that are not friends with me. The number you see up there. These are the only people who are friends that can come in. 
But the people in the background and for the people here, it's some people here right now. It's some people on this line right now that if you was to leave right now, you'll die. And go to hell according to the lifestyle that you live in. We got to be real with ourselves. But listen, Lazarus said, listen, I'd rather live, the, live it on the low end down here. That when I get up there, I can have the glory. God's glory all over me. I suffered while I was down here. They looked over me while I was down here. All I wanted was somebody to feed me. I wasn't asking for money. I was asking for food. But the rich man was too busy that he didn't have time. The rich man thought that he had it all together because he was financially stable. But if you're not stable in God, you can have all the money in the world. You still can't buy a trip to heaven. You can have a nice house, you can have a nice car, you can have it all together on earth and you'll still die and go to hell. You'll still die and go to hell. The Bible said my people perish for the lack of knowledge. That you figure that this is living up here and this down here, that is poverty. I don't want to be like Lazarus, that's what some of you saying. But maybe you don't have sores on your body. Maybe you're not laying at a gate. But maybe your body is being afflicted with pain. Maybe, you know what I'm saying, you just making ends meet. And it look like everybody else just sore. And it look like everybody just sore. But just because they pretend to know God don't mean that they know God. You can have everything in the world, but when you leave here, you ain't taking nothing with you. You can have it. You can put all on the jewelry on, on them while they're in the casket. Where they going? It'll still be right there on that body. Some of you tonight got to make up your mind that I'm tired of playing. Because hell is real. We have the rich man and we have Lazarus done switch sides. They done change lanes. One was first, now he's last. The one that was last, now he's first. There's been a changing of the gods. Because we, come on, because we always looking for the wrong thing. Just because people feel it, you think people got it together, don't mean that they got it together. Some people just appear to have it together on the outside. So if that's you tonight, what is separating you from the love of God? Is the beer really worth it? Is the cigarette really worth it? Is the weed really worth it? Is fornication really worth it? That if you were to leave here tonight, if your number was called tonight, can you say, in all honesty, that I'm ready? The Bible says no man knows the day nor the hour that the Son of God returned. Now check this out. The rich man saw Lazarus die. But he did not know that death was around the corner. And as Lazarus left this side of life, he was carried away by angels into the bosom of Abraham. But the rich man, he died and he was buried and opened up his eyes in hell. What is God saying tonight? God is saying it is just that serious. That you don't even know what tomorrow holds. We just know who holds tomorrow. The Bible said that he cometh like a thief in the night. No man know the day nor the hour that the Son of God returns. Tonight could be the night. This is how serious it is. Tonight could be the night. If tonight could be the night, would you make it in? 
I want you to weigh in on that. If tonight would be the night that God called you home, would you make it in? Come on, let me know. Yes or no? Let me be real with yourself. Because you know the lifestyle that you live in. Lazarus was overlooked, but he was built for it. Lazarus was overlooked, but he was built for it. Come on, we got we got some people being real tonight. We got a yes, we got a no. Let's be real, family. Don't come lying. Let it be real. If you, he was to call you home right now, this ain't even no game or no gimmicks. If he was to call you right now, right this minute, and said, I'm going to judge you. I'm going to judge you today based on what you have done. Would you make it? Would you make it? Come on. Don't know, know some of y'all. You know what I'm saying? Y'all need to weigh in. Would you make it? Would you make it? I want you to weigh in. Let me for real tonight. Because I don't want to think that I'm going to make it to heaven. And then I die and go to hell. Oh, rich man just living the life. And if he knew what he really need, Lazarus had it. He could have learned a lot from Lazarus. I refuse to be the same. Let's be real, family. Some dude on here named Marco Hudson said, I'd probably not, but would you? Yes, I would make it to heaven. This is a lifestyle that you got to live. You can't live this life any kind of way. I don't just, my God. Just come on here for decoration. You cannot be anointed and appointed. God ain't going to anoint and appoint people that plan. Now some people have a form of godliness, but they deny the power. If you can't make it, then it's your opportunity to clean your mess up. You know, you live in any kind of way. I could tell some people some stuff about them. Like really, like for real. Come on, this, this didn't come overnight. I was once you. I was once you. Being real with you, I was once you. I, but guess what? I had a soul that needed to be saved. It was God was to call me today. I make it. Because I didn't pick this up overnight. I didn't change overnight. But my God. I refuse to stay in the same situation that I'm in. And as long as you want to stay in that situation, you'll stay in that situation. But until you're willing to throw up your hands and say, I surrender. Let me tell you something, Marco. I guess this your first time. I don't know. But thank God for you. You need to surrender. No gains, no gimmick. But by yourself, you need to surrender. You got a good heart, but you want to do, you got to do things your way. But Jesus Christ died that you have a right to the tree of life. You ain't, listen, choose this day who you going to serve. My life ain't for everybody. I know everybody got a life that they got to live. I didn't just wake up and come up overnight. Trust me. Watch this, Marco. Stay tuned. Watch it. Now watch it, cause apparently, you know, M Marco Hudson. Now listen, family. Hallelujah. Anybody on here, just being connected to me, 
just seeing the miracles, signs, and wonders can say that I'm a true man of God. I want them words right there. Don't lie for me because we got Brother Marco Hudson on here. And he want to know for sure. So we need some witnesses to attest to whether I'm a real man of God or not. Anybody? You don't have to prove, put it to prove to me. But if you know for yourself, let's help Brother Marco out. This ain't no game. This ain't no gimmick. Read it. Read it, Marco. Read it. Read it, Marco. Everybody from all different places. Everybody from all different places. I'm not making nobody say nothing. My hand right here, Marco. Read the comment, Marco. I don't I know it's some people in the church playing, but this ain't one of them. I know some people in the pew playing, but this ain't one of them. God bless you, Trainer Simpkins. Hallelujah. Victory Mars, God bless you. Hallelujah. Shannon, God bless you. I'm not trying to lead you astray. I'm trying to show you the right way. I'm just being honest with you. Because I see past the outer appearance and I see your heart. And you got a good heart. But t people tend to get over on you. Now, Marco, let's just go with you. Do that sound familiar, Marco Hudson? Now, I don't know you. Hallelujah. I don't know you, Marco, but do that sound familiar? It's sometimes in your life people have looked over you. The prank, the main reason you here tonight, because this fits you. You've been looked over. Matter of fact, you was Lazarus. It was a time that you were that you were dependent on other people. Marco, am I talking to you? Does this make sense? Help me out, Marco. Let's talk. Let's talk. Let's talk, Marco. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, talk to me, Marco. So, Marco, does this sound... Plenty of times, okay? So anything I'm saying right now, have you told me this? And even, Marco, I see a little girl. You got a little girl? Come on, I'm going to read the mail. Marco, do you have a little girl? Do you have a daughter? I see a little girl. Oh yeah, I'm with you. Marco, talk to me. Talk to me. Hallelujah, Jesus. You got seven girls. Mm. I don't know. This this one a little one, Marco. This is a little girl. This is a little girl. This ain't no tall girl. This is a little one because I seen her on your side. I seen her on your side. And she was holding on to you. I seen her on your side. And this girl, and this little girl, she brown skinned. Any of this sound familiar? 
Glory to the Lamb. Jesus. And even in your lifetime, Marco, I even heard you tell me, I don't want to raise my children the same way that I was raised. Come on, Marco, let me read the mail, sir. I'm letting you know. Is it true so far, Marco? Have you ever said that you did not want to read raise your children the same way that you were raised, but you found yourself at times doing it. Talk to me, Marco. My God, Jesus. See, Marco, your heart right. It's time for your heart. You understand? You looking for something. You seeking something in God. And my God, you found it. Okay. So I'm true. So that's true so far. Okay. I even see a situation with your job. I don't know. Are you working, Marco? Send the fire family. We've we've hit a ride. Marco, are you working? Because I see a situation on a job. The fire of God is here. Marco, there were some people on your job that tried to get you fired. Am I talking to you, Marco? Fresh fire fall. Come on, Marco, talk to him. Listen, Marco, so do I need to go on? Do I need to go on, Marco, because the things that I just told you, did you tell me this? I told you about it's a daughter, a young girl. She kind of real attached to you more than the other one, but this one I seen you holding her, and she brown skinned. But she a young girl, she ain't like old. But I seen you holding her. I seen you holding her. Marco, I didn't arrive overnight. Come on. Let me tell you something, Marco. My God, Jesus. Marco, tell me, is, it, is all of what I'm saying is true or have you told me? Oh, I know what it is. You called me and you told me. And I just so happened to know that you were going to come here today. But let me speak into your life. Because it's a bunch of dry places in your life. And it's a lot of confusion that come to your mind. And it looked like that you can't get forward because you keep going back. Am I talking to you, Marco? Am I talking to you? Okay. Listen, Marco, let me tell you something. Listen. God love you, man. Do you understand? The message tonight was for you. Because in your life, you have been look, overlooked many times. And even on, even on a job, certain position that you should have been in line for, you got looked over. And not only even that, I even see it was some people on your job trying to get you fired. It was some people that wanted you. They tried to get you in trouble. And it looked like 
You know what I'm saying? You trying to figure out, Lord, why am I? I don't want my children to do what I did. But then you find yourself taking them through the same thing. And sometimes you sit back and say, I'm going the same direction. And you try to do something about it. Marco, do you want me to pray for you? That's enough right there, Marco, to show you. I don't know nothing about you, but God knows everything about you. He said, I created you in my image and my likeness. You try to obtain this image, but God says, I know you. I created you. And God loved you, Marco. And God loved you. Let's touch and agree. Before I can pray for you, Marco, you got to believe to receive. You understand? I already know. You know that promotion that you was overlooked for? You know the people that they're trying to get you fired from your job. Do you know these people, Marco? Ooh, Jesus. I feel the fire of God, family. I ain't got you to wander, Hudson. I got it. I'm gonna be the really mean. I'm gonna be the really mean. I'm gonna be the really mean. I'm gonna really me. I'm gonna show. I'm gonna show. Marco, come on and talk to me. Do you know the promotion that you got overlooked for? It's like a job or something like that that you you were supposed to be. It was supposed to come to you. And then it's some people that it's some people that want to get you fired, right? And all this to be true. Nah, you ain't, it's cool, you ain't got no, we know Jesus, we all family. But what I'm saying, Marco, is this right here. So far, do you believe me? I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something. And when this manifests, it's some stuff you got to do. I'm, I'm going to let you do two or three things, that's it. Just to show you, you know. So, Marco, is it true what I just told you about? Is some people that, you know, they, they, they trying to get you fired. But get what, Marco? God said he'll, he'll get rid of them just to show you that he ain't nothing to play with. He'll get rid of them and you'll see them leave and you'll still be there. Feel the presence of the Lord. Listen, Marco. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let me pray with you, Marco. Let me pray with you. Okay, Marco, let me pray with you. And listen, every generational curse. Let me see, it's one of your children. It's a it's like an older one. I don't know if it's the oldest one. But one of them have drawn away from you. God said, I'm going to rekindle that relationship. God said, I'm going to rekindle that relationship. I'm going to pray. Everybody send the fire for Marco. Marco, I want you to surrender tonight. God get ready to shift your whole entire life. Now, when God shift your life, this is all I want you to do, Marco. I want you to testify. That means come back on my Facebook page and write a testimony. That's one. I want you to come back to a Facebook Live that I had Monday on Sunday and Tuesday. That's two. But three, I want you to come and worship with me at church just one Sunday. Just one Sunday. Three. Can you handle that, Marco? Three things. Testimony. 
Facebook Live, and come to the church. Thompson, Georgia, 108 Guy Road. Any Sunday that you feel like it. Preferably on the second Sunday if you want to hear me preach. But it don't matter. The fire of God is in the place anyway, so just come. Three, three, three of Marco. I'm getting ready to pray for you. Do you have a daughter that you're distant with, Marco? Like a ch older child, not that, not that little one, not that little one that you had on your shoulder, on your side, but another one that is a distant relationship between it look like it look like they pulled away. Is one, I'm going to tell you where it's going to be on my page, Marco, but do you have a daughter or one of your oldest child that look like they done pulled away from you? And you were like, you want, you're trying to gain back that relationship. God said, I'll fix it. Just to show you where I'm at. Is it true, Marco? And I'm getting ready to pray. The oldest. Okay, Is y'all saying, yes, Lord, uh, he have an oldest daughter that is pulled away from it? Sony, okay. Now, Marco, not if I'm a real man of God, but because I'm a real man of God. You watch this and you listen closely. Lord, I'm your servant. Lord, if you speak to me, let Marco, oldest daughter, call him and say, Daddy, you listen good, Marco. I want a relationship with you. I'm sorry. Let us fix things. Watch what I tell you, Marco. You watch what I tell you. You watch. God is getting ready to rekindle that relationship. God is getting ready to rekindle that relationship with your oldest daughter. And this is only a sign of where God is. And there's some people on the job that you're at. They, they don't even like you just because of how you look. You know how some people just don't like it. Pay attention. Stay away. Just mind your own business. Don't entertain things. Because they don't want to get rid of you. I'm getting ready to pray for Marco. Father in the name of Jesus. Release your fire upon Marco right now in the name of Jesus. Let him feel the fire fall fresh upon him. Let him feel a warm sensation, Jesus. Touch his body like never before. Father, right now in the name of Jesus. Father, rekindle the relationship between him and his oldest daughter. Father, rekindle the relationship, God. Let it be for a sign. Father, turn Marco's life around. Open his eyes. Let him see like never before. Do what only you can do in his life, Father. Work a miracle tonight in his life. I speak to every generational curse. Every dead weight that's upon his shoulder is even time he felt like he didn't know how he was going to make it. Father, release it upon his shoulder. Take the weight off. Let him feel your fire. Visit him, God, like never before. Let him see who you are. Through this relationship, reconnect it, my God. Through this reconnection relationship. Let Marco see. Your glory. Father we decree and declare done. 
In Jesus name. Amen. Now Marco. Just because. I have a connection with the father. You watch. Three things Marco. What the world. Hold up y'all. Hold on family. He said she called before he came on the live. Is that true, Marco? I can't go back and catch all these messages. Hallelujah. Marco, you still here, buddy? Hallelujah, Jesus. Marco, is it true that your daughter called you before the lie? Hallelujah. Glory to your name. My God. Marco, just let me ask you something, Marco. So she called. Yes, she called. My God, Jesus. You watch the relationship begin to come back together, Marco. You watch your relationship with your daughter begin to come back together. I feel the fire of God, family. Three things, Marco. Testimony. Come back to a Facebook Live and visit me at the church any given Sunday. Every Sunday, it'll be posted on my Facebook wall. The time, the place, the address, you invited. Three things, Marco. Three things, Marco. Three things. And you ain't even got to tell me who you are when you come in. I don't have to go and try to find you on Facebook to figure out who you is. God knows all. And God sees all. Marco, what you think? Woo! Hallelujah. Marco said we'll do. Do you believe any of it now, Marco? Now, y'all. Boy, I tell you, the Holy Ghost something else. Boy, he know everything. My God. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah, family. Send the fire. Marco, you was one of the ones that were overlooked. You was one of the ones, Marco, that people overlooked you. But my God, God said you built for it. Because in this race that you're running, when you make this transition, you gonna see the hands of God move upon your life. You wait till you come to church, Marco. You wait. You wait. Y'all, I guess gained a brother. Marco, did I gain a brother tonight or what? Through the Holy Ghost family. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Mark. Walk. My God, Jesus. Let's send the fire family. Listen, before we pray, was it helpful? Heaven rejoice when one soul is saved. Prince is red. Let me see right quick. 
Hallelujah. Prince is ready. Listen, there's a job waiting on you. I see some financial struggles and situations and living conditions. Prince is red. Am I talking to you? Fire of God. All I'm saying, family, if they overlook you, you rather have what Lazarus had. Lazarus had something that was going to get him to glory. The rich man had everything on earth, but it wasn't going to get him nowhere. So tonight, listen, if you live in double standard, come out of it. Come out of it. Come out of it. I told Shatavis, Brother Marco, let me see, uh, Shatavis' mom, about something called hidden treasure. Okay. Listen, Prince is red. Listen. The moment you go, God said, I'll make a way for you. It's some stuff that got to be dropped off. But God said, I'll help you every step of the way. Miss Riley, I got you covered. God said, he'll help you every step of the way, Princess Red. The things upon your life that seem like they're weighing you down is even some stuff that you ain't even. That's what we here for, Mr. Lewis, Lewis Senior. Demetrius Lewis Senior. Listen, stay connected. I don't know, Mr. Lewis Senior. Stay connected. Go on my page. Go watch some more lives. Other lives. They all gonna help you. They all gonna bless you. But listen, Prince Red, it's some stuff that you ain't even happy about in your life. But God is getting ready to shift your entire life. When you walk out, God said, I go before you. God said, he gonna show you. If you go ahead, you'll see the hands of God move upon your life. But God said, when the hands of God move upon your life, God said, seek me while I may be found. Seek me while I may be found. It's some stuff that you don't always like to do, but you end up doing it like some stuff, you know. But God is getting ready to shift some things for you. In Jesus' name. Now go and get your job and come back and testify. In Jesus' name. It's just that simple. The grace of God go before you. God will make them hire you. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. If it was helpful tonight, family, those of you that haven't, let me know. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Those of you that haven't, that was a part of the 20 that did not sow. Make sure you put your seed in the ground. If you sow, you grow. In Jesus' name. Send the fire, family. We get ready to pray that everyone's mind frame be shifted. That God is getting ready to take you from the back and bring you to the front. God is going to take you from the back and bring you to the front. Let's pray, family. Link your faith with my faith tonight. Oh, let me see. Marie Williams. 
I wasn't going to even say nothing. But listen, God said he's going to show you somebody in a dream. Pay attention. In Jesus' name. Pay attention. Pay attention. Marie, pay attention. In Jesus' name. Link your faith with my faith tonight. But need a heal, you need a job, go and get it. Let the grace of God go before you. Let the grace of God go before you. You watch. It's yours. In Jesus' name. It's yours in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen, Miss Lou. Listen, we're getting ready to pray, family. I feel the fire of God. Anybody feel the fire of God? Listen, before we, what we're going to pray about is this right here. We just going to surrender. Hallelujah. Anybody want to surrender? Anybody want to surrender tonight? We ain't, hallelujah. We just want to make sure the people that need to make it in, they make it in. If you're trying to surrender tonight, link your faith with my faith and say, I surrender. And as you surrender, we link in faith tonight. We trust it and we believe in God to work a miracle in your life. God getting ready to change your whole entire situation. Hallelujah. Listen, surrender tonight. <laughs> surrender tonight. Sister King ain't paying you no mind. I saw you. I saw you, Sister King. Hallelujah. Surrender tonight. If you have not surrendered, I'm not saying that you perfect. I'm not saying that tomorrow you're going to have it all together. But what I'm saying is that I surrender tonight. That God helped me to get my life together. Because I no longer want to be the same. I cannot live this life any kind of way. I was bought with a price. Marie, there's a pruning fit to get ready to go on in your life. Listen to me, Marie. It's a, it's a pruning that you're going to experience. That means some stuff is going to be cut off. Mm -hmm. Marie, God love you. But there's a pruning that got to take place. Everyone that's surrendering tonight that's saying, listen, not my will but your will be done in my life. Lord, I surrender. No gains, no gimmicks. The power of God is evident right here, right now. I surrender. Mm -hmm. Surrender. Marco, I'll be on on Sunday and Tuesday. Sunday and Tuesday. Sunday and Tuesday. If you surrender tonight, you're just giving God permission to help you with you God I don't want to be the same I don't want to die and go to hell you understand when you know what you know the rich man had it all together but still died and went to hell Lazarus he didn't have much but my God he had everything tonight we offering salvation those of you that said I surrender. 
Put your hand up. Your right hand. Mm -hmm. My God. My God. Shonda Nicole Thomas God is raising you up in this hour You're going to be a powerful woman of God God always used the shy people Just tell God to give you a spirit of boldness Holy Ghost boldness And stand up and declare The words of the Lord for everyone that said I surrender Father in the name of Jesus Put your hand up Forgive us for our sins Our shortcomings Our incapability Forgive us for not praying like we should Forgive us for not seeking you like we should Forgive us God For living contrary to your word Forgive us God For seeing known and unknown Seen and unseen Father strengthen us even now Help us be the men and women of God that you called us to be. Father, come into our life. Lord, we make you our Lord and Savior. We surrender our will to your will. Let your will be done in our life. Father, we decree and declare miracle signs and wonders to take place in our life. Father, we love you and we lean and depend on you. Father, we can do nothing without you. Father, take our bodies and cover us under your blood. And bring us out white as snow. Father, we submit our will to your will. Let your will be done. Do what only you can do in our life. Take what we got and do something with it. Father, right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we decree and declare that our life will no longer be the same. Father, I am saved. I am mm -hmm. sanctified. Father, fill us with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. With the evidence of speaking in tongues. Father, we don't want to miss you. Father, if you was to call us home, we want to go back with you. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we decree and declare it done. In your son Jesus' name, we say, amen. Listen. Hallelujah. Listen. Say I'm saved. Shonda Nicole Tom Thomas, did you receive that in the name of Jesus? Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. Family, come on and say I'm saved. Let make the devil mad. Say I'm saved. Say I'm saved. God bless you, Charlotta. Miss Simmons, God bless you. Say I'm saved, family. We making the devil mad. The market is something you contemplating on in your mind. God going to show you what to do. Prepare yourself. The market's right. It's something that you, you, you've been sitting back thinking on. What should you do? And God said he's getting ready to reveal it to you. And you're going to know without a shadow of a doubt what to do. The mark is right. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. Is Shonda Thomas still on here? We're going to pray for Travis Curry. He's really sick with a mask. In Jesus' name, we'll pray for him. We'll pray for him in Jesus' name. 
Hallelujah. Glory be. Show some love, family. Come on and show some love tonight. We covering him under the blood of Jesus. Did you did you hear what I said, uh, Shonda Thomas? Did you hear what I said, Shonda Thomas? The words of the Lord that I gave unto you right before I start praying. I didn't see whether you replied or not. I'm saved. Hallelujah. Jesus. That's your prayer. Shonda Nicole Thomas. Tell God to give you a spirit of boldness. To stand up and declare his word. Because he called you for a time such as this. And even though you may not understand it, it's for a time such as this. Amen, Ms. Johnson, we cover you. We praying for Travis Curry. Hallelujah. Listen, family, those of you that desire to sow that have not sold, Remember, the link is at the top. The link is at the top. What you sow into, you grow into. What you sow into, you grow into. I keep you in prayer, Chanel, because God tugging on you. Don't resist him. Assist him. Go ahead and go on surrender. Chanel, go ahead. And go on surrender. God is pulling on you. Sheila Kendricks, we're praying for you. Hallelujah. We're praying for you, Sheila Kendricks, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, family. Listen. Listen, God bless each and every one of you. We praying for you, Charlotta. Hallelujah. I'm going to say this. Here we go. Chanel Simmons. Listen, it's, it's a tug. It's a pull. It's a fight. But it's worth it. Find yourself back in the face of God. Get back to what God has called you to. Do you understand? Uh, Chanel, get back to what God has called you to. Don't resist it. Assist him. A lot of people want to pull you back into the world. And God trying to pull you here. In whatever way you lean, that's which way you go. But we ain't leaning and rocking with it. We got to go on, go with the Lord. Some people need you. There's a much needed word inside of your belly. Receive it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Listen, God bless each and every one of your family. If you haven't, go to YouTube and subscribe to my YouTube channel, like the videos. Okay. Okay, Chanel. Like the videos. Like the video. And if you're not following me, those of you in the background that are on here that you can't come in, you got to send me a friend request. And I accept your friend request. And listen, the next live, you'll be able to come in. But listen, God bless each and every one of you. I'm praying with you. I'm praying for you. Listen, we'll be about, we're on Sunday and Tuesday. Time to be announced. That's why I did away really with the flyer because I couldn't keep changing the time. So time to be announced. It'll be always after 8, either at 8 o'clock or right after 8, Sunday and Tuesday. God bless each and every one of you. Hallelujah. We're praying with you. We're praying for you. 
We love you. Shalom. Wait a minute, y'all. Wait. Chastity kids. My God. Chastity Kendra. All right, Curtis. Hallelujah. Chastity Kendra. Hey, listen to Wanda Hudson. Remember, if Marco, Marco might be gone off, but I believe you can get in touch with him. Three things. Uh... Testimony. That's on my page. He got to type it on now. Alive. And uh, and come to the church. Any Sunday he choose. Uh, I see you, Sister King. Tell I don't know. I don't know yet, Sister King. I ain't got to it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But we know it if Jacoria did it, we know how it is. Glory be to the Lamb of God. I seen Chastity come in, and I didn't want to leave without touching her. Because remember, Sunday, I was looking for Chastity Sunday, and I just seen Chastity come in. Chastity, you still here? If not, we getting ready to go. Hallelujah. Y'all keep chastity lifted up in your prayer. God bless you, Tar. Hallelujah. God bless each and every one of you. Hallelujah. I will fit the, take her through a deliverance. But I'm going to go, family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May the peace of God go before you. That's right, to want to appreciate you. Hallelujah. God bless you, family. Praying with you. Praying for you. Prepare yourself to Marcus. God be to reveal something to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Teresa, God bless you. Hallelujah. Shalom, family. Good night.